Hi guys, welcome back, and hopefully you've now got that initial, that opening riff together, or at least to some extent. Now what we're going to be doing now is the verse, and the first thing I want to do is just play it for you so you know what we're going to be playing. So let me turn the gain on, and here we go, one, two, three, four. <laughs> And it basically repeats that with some finer details that I'll go through in a minute. So first of all, hopefully you notice that it's, it's not your classic lead part, it's more of a riff based idea and it's based very much around chords. Now something you'll have studied if you've been looking over in the chord section is power chords and that's all this is. This is basically just high end power chords that you're playing through. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you at all, then it's all dealt with in the chord section. For now, we're just going to focus on the technique of playing this because there's some, it might look relatively simple, but there's some quite intricate parts. Now, first of all, let's just take our first chord or riff, which is this. Okay, and what we're doing is we're starting up here in the uh, sixth fret of the D string. That's where my first finger is going, and my third finger is hovering over the eighth fret of the G string. Okay, that's kind of like the chord. Notice that I've got my thumb firmly at the back, as always, and I'm able to stretch across those two like that. Okay, so that's pretty much what you're playing. So you notice this isn't like a pentatonic scale or a G major scale or anything like that. This is more an arpeggio of a chord, so outlining the chord. Now. Let's just keep it simple for now and just hold that down there, okay? And we're going to learn the picking pattern with the right hand. So it goes like this. <laughs> but slightly better than that. Um, so all we're doing is we're going down up on the D string, okay? So down up and then down on the G string. Down up, down, like that, okay? Then we're going to come back onto the D string with an upstroke. Down, up, down, up. Okay? Down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> so let's just do this nice and slow. So we're doing D string twice, down on the G string, and then we're going to go up, down on the D string, and finally an up on the G string. So I'm going to play it really slow and talk it through. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so really this is the key to getting this part basically right. So I'm just going to put my drum machine on at 80 BPM. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit slower than that even. We're going to go right down to 70 for now. Oh, do you know what? 60. <laughs> Let's really make sure this ingrains in your head. So it'll be. So we're going down, up, down, up, down, up. 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 Keep trying to play along with me. Down, up. Okay, cool. So, you do that as long as you need until that picking motion is natural. It's, it's very specific and I, we need it to be like that for it to be flowing and rhythmical sounding. The, the, there's specific down and up strokes be, uh, to ensure that you're doing alternate picking, even though you're jumping across strings. Okay, it's going to make it really nice and rhythmical. Now, what we then need to do to that to make it now work as a rock sound, so that's kind of almost, you know, soft rock. Because the, I guess the difference here is that the notes are ringing together. Because you're just holding these two fingers down like a chord, the notes are ringing together. What we need to make it sound like is this. So we separate the notes. And it's, it's pretty simple, but can be quite hard to get together with your left hand. As soon as you finish plucking the D string, you're going to just take the pressure off. Now, you might need to f take your whole finger off. You might just need to release the pressure, it depends how in control of that you are at the moment. I'm going to do an exaggerated version by taking my fingers off, okay? So like this. So you see, 
I once talked about this seesaw effect and not wanting to do it. Well, in this case, we kind of do a little bit. You know, we do want the fingers to go off and on because they're on different strings. And to individualize the sound of the string, you need to stop the other string from ringing, quite simply. And you do that by taking your fingers off or just releasing the pressure. So the kind of outwardly obvious way is taking the fingers off that far. Okay, you can see how far those fingers are coming away from the fretboard. Okay, now you can also just do it much more subtly than that by just releasing the pressure. So down, up, as you play the G string, just release the pressure of your first finger and it's done the same job. So you can see there, it doesn't look like my fingers are moving at all. But I would suggest starting with the obvious thing to make sure your fingers are in tune with you and then gradually kind of reduce the amount of movement you're making, okay? Especially as you get faster doing this. So there you have it, there's the kind of picking part. Now spend as much time as you like getting that correct because all we then need to do is just place the fingers in the right places, okay? So what we essentially do is we're gonna do that first one twice round, okay? So like this. And again. Then we're gonna move this kind of shape down two frets, so one, two. So try and keep the shape like it's a chord, okay? And then we do exactly the same thing here. So I've now got fourth fret D string and sixth fret G string. We do exactly the same. Twice. Okay? Then we return to the first one and do it twice. Then back to the second one, do it twice. Then we go down another two frets, one, two, same kind of chord position, uh, fingers in the same place, but now on the second fret and the fourth fret, we do exactly the same thing. Okay, and then that's your first loop, okay? And you would do that twice, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go round that loop twice with our lovely drum beat at 60 BPM just to show you how that should sound, okay? You can start practicing with distortion as well if you want, because then you start to hear whether or not you're controlling this sound um, when there's a bit more gain. So if you've got the ability to put some distortion on the amp or a pedal, then use it. So here we go, two, three, four. Twice. Those again. Nice and slow. And again, make sure your picking is correct. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Let me come down. Then we're going to start all over again. Those ones again. Then down. Now at this point, we're just gonna go like this. Okay, so at that point, when you've done all of that, you just put the fourth fret of the D string on with your first finger. And you're gonna hold that down for essentially two bars, okay? Which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two very slow bars, of course. Um, and that, after that, will take you back to your main riff. Okay, so there's your rhythm part. Now, in terms of putting it all together, you've got two parts. And in terms of structure, it's very, very simple. We do the intro, which is the, the actual main riff. 
then we have that bar break. Remember, we just have a one bar where we do absolutely nothing, get yourself in position for this, and then you play through that whole part that I just went through. Back to the riff, and then it, you know, it repeats. So then you have the bar break, and then you go back to the verse, and then you end on the riff. Okay, so that is something that the, the structure of it is something you'll get from watching the playthrough video. Okay, um, so with that in mind, remember you've got the tab to go through, which has got it you know, all nice and very clear for you, and you can kind of slow it down and do what you want with that, make sure you've got it correct. And then gradually you want to be getting it up to the pace where you're actually playing along with the video. It might take a few weeks, but this is supposed to be challenging, guys. I don't want to make it too easy for you, and you're going to get a hell of a lot out of this if you get it up to that speed with the right technique, you know? If you do get up to that speed with this correct technique that I've gone through, you're gonna be in a superb position to carry on through the course because you're now gonna have the tools that's gonna to enable us to take things a whole level further. So, good luck with that and I'll see you next time.